Christ is my foundation, the rock on which I stand. Come on, it doesn't matter when the rains came, the winds blew. Come on, what's coming? Sickness, disease, all kinds of things. Financial ruin, all kinds of stress, pressure, family, depression, anxiety, right? Rains came and the winds blew, but my house was built on you. Our house, our foundation is built on Jesus. Our house, our foundation is built on his word. Our house, our foundation is built on his promises. And his promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. You need that healing? Yes and amen. You need that wisdom? Yes and amen. You need that prosperity? Yes and amen. Come on. Yes and amen. Woo-wee. Let's go. (sighs) Christ is our firm foundation. And on that rock is what we stand. That's how come we won't be shaken when the world is shaken. Can you guys remember 2020, COVID shook the world. And what happened? We stood. (laughs) We stood firm. Firm. We stood firm as a church, as a body of believers, believing in faith with each other, agreeing with each other. Not one man left behind, right? It was isolation, but are you, I see you. Come on, we went to live stream, we, we leveled up. We went from level to level to level. Let's go. Yes. Man, that, that when, when the worship is so connected to the word, it can't help but just stir you up, right? Get you pumped, get you excited about the God we serve. We serve a good, good father who loves us and he's got plans for us. He's got visions and dreams and purposes for us. And it's our job, our responsibility to transform our mind, our soul, the way we think, the way we process to his word and his promises and his kingdom and his way of doing things. Y'all ready to level up? Y'all ready to level up? Y'all came for the word today? You came believing that God's got a word for you? Come on, don't lean back, lean in. Lean in and receive all that God has for you. Wisdom for life. Let's go. We in it for life. Wisdom for life, right? Going beyond Going beyond in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? You can come to church, you can hear the word, but to a whole nother level when you understand, when you understand the word of God, right? That's what we're after, that comprehension, that understanding, understanding so that we can rightly apply the word, so we can walk in wisdom, right? Walk in wisdom. So on Sunday, I got to be with the youth. I love being with the youth, right? I love being with the youth. I came as a youth, you know, back in the day. Anyways, I came at 13 years old. So when I get back there, it just reminds me of when I came and when I was just leveling up. And so I go back there and I'm like, you know what? What have you guys been learning about wisdom? They're like, huh? <laughs> I thought you were going to give us a lesson. I know. I'm like, no, I want to know. I want to know what you guys retaining, what you're receiving, you know? And it's funny because some people can be like, you know, when I was younger, I was buck wild and we was crazy, but you have Jesus and you shouldn't do that. So, you know, you should do better. And, you know, like, I'm like, you know what? When I was 13, when I was 14, I came to church, I got the word and I leveled up. So, so are you. Okay. If I can do it, you can do it. So let's go. So there's no excuses. But anyways, I have a great relationship with the young people. And they're in there sharing. And um, one young person, right, she shares this story about how she's, there's three sisters. They got their two best friends over and they're in the backyard practicing volleyball for, you know, the picnic that's coming up. So they could be like, who, yeah, winning team. Y'all know who it is. Okay. So they're all over at, in the backyard practicing volleyball. And, and she's telling the story that they hit the volleyball. It goes over to the, to the neighbor's yard. And I may be messing up the whole story, but like they get a wagon and they get a chair and then they get a one friend on top of the next friend and they got a pick fork and they're trying to like pick fork it over. And all along, their brother is in the back, their older brother, he's sitting in the back and he's standing there with me. And he's like, what? He's like, 
They did all that and I was in the house. They could have just came and asked me. I would have easily went over there, got it. Nobody would have got hurt. Nobody would have been falling over. No wagon, no chair, no pick for, no, no scratched up ribs. Like none of that. None of that would have happened. You just could have, should have came and asked your big brother who was in the same house, right? I looked over at Tristan and I said, you know how many times God says that every day? <laughs> he says, if you would have just asked me, I'm in the same house. I'm in the dwelling. I'm there with you. Can you ask me? Will you ask me to help you? Will you ask me for wisdom? Will you ask me for understanding? Will you ask me? Will you ask me? I just thought that was a big brother. He's like, what? All this happened while I was in the house? You should have asked me. Why didn't they ask me? Then none of that would have took place, you know? Because they're over here talking about, like, way dramatic, you know? He's like, no, you should have asked me. I'm like, Tristan, you know how many times God says that? <laughs> All day. <laughs> ask me. And you know what? We're going to ask God. We're going to ask God for wisdom. We're going to ask God for understanding. We need understanding of the wisdom that goes forth. We need understanding, right, for our everyday life. You know, we've been talking about Proverbs, we've been talking about that Solomon asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for anything else, but he asked for wisdom. We've been talking about the, the pursuit of wisdom through the book of Proverbs, right? And how um, God's word is kind of like the guardrail of our life. It's like the standard, you know, the little plant, the little young plant that's growing, the little tomato, the little bell pepper or whatever, left on its own, it'll take the path of least resistance. That vine is just going to grow down here on the floor and it's going to produce very little harvest. And that's us on our own without the guidance, without the guardrails, without the rules, without the standard of the word of God. And that's why we read the word of God. That's why we study the word of God. So we have a standard that never changes. The standard out there in the world is always changing. What is acceptable and what is acceptable and the standard goes lower and lower and lower and lower, right? But our standard has never changed. Our standard is the word of God. That's the standard of our life. We're talking about the standards, right? We're just talking about all the different things that we're learning. We're going to be talking today about meditating on the word. How many of you guys know that when you learn your times tables, right? You got them, you're just memorizing them, you're memorizing them, you're memorizing them. And then there's one moment when you understand, when you get understanding, right? So you can memorize a scripture, you can memorize a scripture, you can write it down, but there's a point where you need to connect with comprehension. You need to connect with understanding. So you have an understanding about why you're doing what you're doing. You have an understanding about why you believe, right? Why we believe this. You, so that when you communicate to your kids, it goes from generation to generation. Wisdom is built upon wisdom. What's happened is there's been no wisdom passed on. What's been passed on is traditions. What's been passed on is foolishness. What's been passed on is like your mom got pregnant at 13 and you got pregnant at 12. That's what's been passed on. 16, so then you got 13. It's been 17, you're like, oh man, this just happened. Uh, one of the young guys was like, oh, I don't know, we're talking about age. Don't even get me started. Oh, like you're the same age as my mom. And he's 25. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just funny. But anyways, not funny, not funny. Funny, not funny. And then I remember why I got a little wisdom. I got a little wisdom, all right? Just a little wisdom. Anyways, right? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. How many are ready to go beyond? Go beyond in every area, right? Godly wisdom is supreme. Godly wisdom is supreme. Knowledge is information. Knowledge is information. So it was so cool talking to the young people because that's what they grasp from it. They're like, knowledge is just information and that wisdom is application, right? And that, and that there's seasons in their life where they're going to have an opportunity to apply that wisdom. There's a season when you're under your parents and there's a season when you're not 
financially responsible on your own. And there, then there's a season. There's a season when you get a phone. There's a season when you get a certain account. There's a season when you get a savings and a banking account and when you have to do something on your own. And there's your moment to apply wisdom, right? You're gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge for the right opportunity for application, the right opportunity to apply that knowledge when you have understanding of it. So, oh, I just love being back there. It was so cool. Knowledge is information, understanding's comprehension, and wisdom is the correct application of knowledge and understanding. Paul said in Ephesians 1.17, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. I have this scripture printed on my desk. When it's somebody's birthday, I send them this scripture. I pray over the young people. I pray over LLYA. I pray over the leadership. Come on, I pray over us that we will be granted a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. More than Now more than ever, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. When all the chaos of the, of the gas prices, when all the chaos of, you know, the chicken went up like $20, you know, you're like, what in the world? When somebody else says that, you know, you walk by at the store, like this Costco price was not this last week. I'm like, shh, stop, stop. Everybody's making it worse, right? And here I am talking about it, but, but we need wisdom. We need wisdom to understand that we're going to be all right. Is God our provider or not? Do we trust him or not? Right? Are we a part of his system, his kingdom, his way of doing things or not? That's us. We're part of the kingdom of God. We may live in this world, but we ain't of this world. We're of a whole nother kingdom. And we're going to put into man our father. Heaven's streets are made of gold. Come on, God, just drop a street on us. Just throw us some asphalt. We'll take it, right? We'll take it. I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Revelation is understanding. Revelation is that comprehension. When you have a revelation, you have an understanding of what's being said, of what's being taught, of what's being talked about, of what's being presented. That's why when we're reading Proverbs, we need comprehension. We need understanding. That's why I love getting it to young people too. Because if you have that kind of wisdom, you walk in a whole nother level. You walk in a whole nother level in the business place, right? If you're having an application in and you got somebody else next to you who has an application in and they ain't got no wisdom, they're void of understanding, you already leveled up. You already leveled up. Just because you can show up on time, you already leveled up. Just because you can keep your word, you already leveled up, right? That gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into true knowledge of him. There it is, wisdom, understanding, knowledge of him. For we know the Father through the Son. How do we know God the Father? We look to Jesus. We look to Jesus, the words of Jesus, and how he acted, and how he responded, and how he fulfilled his mission. He fulfilled his purpose. That's how we see the Father, right? That's where we get our wisdom. Wisdom that comes from your spirit, confirmed through the rich knowledge and understanding of your personal relationship. Look at your neighbor and say, your, your personal relationship, your personal relationship with Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, not a superficial religious knowledge of Jesus. You can wear your cross, but do you have an understanding that he rose from the grave, right? We rock your cross, go for it. But what you should be rocking is, is a rock rolled over. <laughs> Show me that rock, all right? Anyways, that's what, it, the, the miracle is that he rose again. The miracle is he's defeated the devil, right? If it was one of us, we would have just went on the cross and that's it. You, you wouldn't have been allowed back up. <laughs> Why? Because we had sin. He did not. He did not. He, although he was tempted, he did not sin. He defeated the enemy. He defeated the devil. And he opened the gates wide open for all of us to make the decision to be set free. You were a slave. You are no more. You are a slave to sin. The door is open. Get out of that grave. The door is open. Get out of that jail cell. Get free. Get free. Free from poverty. 
free from sickness, free from disease, free from, come on, ignorance, let's go. Leveling up in wisdom, not a superficial religious knowledge of Jesus, but a deep, personal, and intimate relationship with Jesus, with the Word. A deep, personal, intimate relationship with the Word of God. You gotta be hungry for the Word. You gotta wake up hungry for the Word like you wake up hungry for food. Man, you wake up. I've been working out more and more and more. I have never been so hungry in my life. I'm like, I'm starving. Give me chicken. <laughs> They're like, I'm like, whoa, like what happened? I just, I wake up hungry. <laughs> it's, a new, it's a new level for me. It's like protein, 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 protein. That's what we had. We had I, I, don't, I realized I don't like protein. <laughs> I'm like, it's kind of nasty. <laughs> if it ain't got no, what I realized is I like sauce. I like the sauce. That's what I like. So you take away the sugar and you take, oh, I'm taking a break from spices. I'm like, I don't like protein. <laughs> so, so I'm just trying to like find new ways of making protein. But anyways, we all got our struggles. If you got a good recipe without sugar, hook a sister up. And without cayenne pepper. But anyways. A deep, personal, intimate relationship with the Word. Not with the menu. <laughs> with the Word. Come on. But I'm serious. Just the way you're hungry and you get that craving. You're like, you see a commercial. You got that craving. You're like, man, we're going to go get those tacos. Man, we're going to go get some fogo. Man, when's the next birthday? We're going to have some cake. You get that craving. You get that craving. We need to be hungry for the Word. We need to be hungry for truth. How many are hungry for truth? We're not going to be lied to anymore. More, falling for every lie, every delusion and illusion that the world is throwing at us, that this is popping and that is popping. This is what you should look like. This is what you should act like. This is what you should strive for. It's seducing you. It's seducing you to say, come, come, come with me. Come with me. Oh, no. Nah. We are following Jesus, not you. Anyways, God himself made a way so that we can have a new life through Christ Jesus. God gave us Christ to be our wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's the first thing, right? Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Look at your neighbor and say, get wisdom. I mean, slap them in the back of the head if they're sleeping. Get wisdom. Just kidding. Nobody's sleeping in this service. Get wisdom, right? Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Get understanding of what that wisdom is. How do I apply this to my everyday life? So you come in, you hear the word, you write a scripture down. But how do I apply this out there? How do I apply this to my relationships? How do I apply this to my marriage? How do I apply this to my parenting? How do I apply this to the workplace? How do I apply this to me as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as a mom. Come on, some of you moms, woo! Give it up to the moms. Yes. Let me tell you though, the days are long, but the years are short. Don't even get me start crying. Okay, I'm gonna reel it in. I'm serious. It's wild. I'm like, what in the world? How, how are they teens? And I have grace. Like, I don't understand what just happened. But anyways, my heart couldn't be more proud of these young people. I mean, I love them with all of my heart. Give my heart and soul to them that they get wisdom, that they get understanding, and that they apply the word of God. Wisdom is application, and that's the most important thing. So get wisdom. Apply, apply apply. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, right? Hear the word, meditate on the word, reflect on the word, ponder on the word. When you get out of this doors, don't just think about what are you going to eat? What are you going to do? What are, you, what are we, oh, who are we going to, who am I going to talk to? Who am I going to hang out with? No. How can I apply the word that went out today? How can I apply this wisdom to my everyday life so that I can be successful in every area of life? So that I, when the rains came and the winds blew, my house was founded on the rock. My house was founded on Jesus. So I didn't fall. I didn't stumble. I may have fallen but I get right back up. I get right back up, 
right back up, right? Meditate on it. How do we meditate on the word? You think about it. You think about it. Man, when you're in a first relationship and you got the feels and you catch the feels and you're just thinking about that person and you're thinking about that person, you can't stop thinking about that person. That's how we should be with the word, you guys. Come on. That's how we should be about the word of God. We thinking about that word of God. It went forth and we know that we are an overcomer. Man, Pastor Dan's been throwing down on Sundays about being an overcomer, about meditating on the word of God, about thinking beyond the situation that we will not fall. We may have pressures pushed down on us, but greater is he that is in me. The pressure in me is greater than the force that's being pushed on me. So what's up? We keep getting back up, getting back up. Not woe is me. Another thing happened to me. Yeah, another thing happened to all of us. Get up. Wise up. Wise up and recognize who you are, who you are. I am so sorry. I, I don't know why I get so mad. <laughs> I get so passionate though. Why? Because I want to see you succeed. I know that God's got a great destiny for every single one of you, but you got to see it. You got to see yourself as an overcomer. You got to see the word come alive in your life and that you will get through this. If Jesus said we are getting through to the other side, we will get through to the other side of depression. We will get through to the other side of financial ruin. We will get through to the other side of fear. We will get through to the other side of anxiety. We will get through to the other side of insecurity, of inferiority. We will get through to the other side. Will we get through to the other side? Yes, we will, because he will never fail us. His word will never fail us. His promises are yes and amen, and he believes in you, but you got to believe in him. You got to believe in you. Come on. You got to believe in the word. You got to believe in the word, and you got to meditate on that word. You got to ponder that word, and you got to know that that word is for me. And what, you know what else we talked about last week? About loving correction. When we come and we hear the word, we got to love correction because if nobody corrects you, nobody loves you. Let me tell you, God loves you and he corrects you. Why? So that you can have that guardrail, so that you can have maximum development, so that you could flourish like that little jalapeno pepper and that little bell pepper and that little tomato, right? So that you're not a vine that's on the ground producing barely any harvest, so that you're growing strong, that you're going straight up, and that you are producing maximum development in every area of your life, in every area. Why? So that you have for others, so that you have fruit for others. You're blessed to be a blessing when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to care for others, when it comes to finances, when it comes to the authority that you walk in, you walk in authority. Somebody says, can you pray for me? You're like, let me take you somewhere. No, you pray for them. You pray for them. Why? Because you're a child of God and you walk in that same authority. Be healed. <laughs> Just ask them, do you believe? <laughs> because if you don't believe, as long as they believe, <laughs> you say, be healed. <laughs> be healed. Yes, right. If it costs you everything you have above all of your possessions, get understanding. Imagine if something cost us of, above all of our possessions. We treasure our possessions. Treasure. That is what you are. Your video games, your computer, your, your, your Tesla, your car. I mean, come on, dream it up. I love stuff. You know, your girl likes stuff. But stuff doesn't have me. I have it. Right? It's not my treasure. It costs me everything. I would give everything for understanding. I'd give everything for wisdom. Give everything for knowledge. Wouldn't trade it for anything. James 1.22, don't fool yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be a fool. <laughs> don't fool yourself into thinking that you're a listener when you are anything but. Letting the word of God, come on, go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you've heard. You parents, when you are talking to your kids, you know when they're not listening. Some of us, that's us with the word. No, we need to not just be hearers, but doers. Come on, 
doers. Act on what you've heard. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in a mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea what they are or what they look like or what they stand for. How many know we've looked at the word, we walked away, we have no idea what we stand for. We, 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 we just, this selfie game is strong, but your inner game better be strong. Your new creation game better be strong. Knowing who you are in Christ better be strong because that's the only thing that will sustain you. That's the only thing. You need to be a person of substance, not a hollow, superficial person, but your selfie game is strong, girl. It's strong. Who cares? Who cares? James one twenty two. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. That's religious people, right? Superficial religious people deceiving themselves, thinking they're a person of substance, but all they have is memorized times tables. They don't have no understanding. All they have is memorized scripture, but they don't walk in no power. All they have is just memorized. You see what I'm saying? You need to be a person of substance. We hear the word, we do the word, we apply the word, we understand the word, and we become a person of substance. And what are you doing? You're speaking the word, planting those seeds in others, planting those seeds in others, right? James 1.22 and the New Living Translation. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself, right? Wisdom is application, and it's the most important thing. Apply the word of God to your everyday life, to your everyday life, not just your Sunday's best, but to your everyday life, to your everyday life. God's word is information, God's word is alive. God's word is more relevant than anything. We need God's word. We need that information. We need that knowledge, right? Receive a revelation. Receive comprehension of that information. And you put into practice the application of that revelation. There you are, just like that kid that's learning those times tables. You're, you're, you're getting the information. You're receiving the revelation. You're putting into application. And then you produce a total transformation, your new creation. You start becoming a whole new person and your family tree is no longer the same. You don't even look the same. You don't act the same. You don't walk the same. You don't talk the same. Why? Because you are transformed by the renewing of your mind to the word of God, producing your inside out, producing that new creation, your spirit man, your true self, who you really are, starts coming out. It starts becoming who you are on the outside. Revelation now, I mean, knowledge is information. Understanding is comprehension. And wisdom is the correct application of knowledge and understanding. If we're going to go beyond in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, first of all, we must recognize that all wisdom comes from God. All wisdom comes from God. And we daily choose to honor God as the source of our wisdom. We daily make the choice that we're going to honor God with our life, living in faith every single day. We're walking by faith and not by sight. We're walking by faith and not by fear, not by the, ru the rules of this world. We walk by faith. We honor you, God. We honor you this day. We honor you for your understanding. We honor you. We honor you with our life. We honor you with our eating, with our sleeping, with our going to work, with our attitude. Whoop. Yeah. With our watching with our Netflixing, with our chilling. God, we honor you with our DMing. Woo, let's honor God. Let's honor God. Come on, that was for somebody. We're gonna honor God. Second, we must ask God for wisdom and we have to know that he gives it willingly. He gives it freely to all who ask. James 1.5, if anyone lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or a circumstance. Anybody got some decisions to make? Some decisions for your future? That career path that you're gonna take? What, what, what does God has for you? What, what is the... What is the yellow brick road for your life, you know? You gotta ask God for wisdom. God, what is it that you have for me? Like, I remember being a young person like, God, what is your will for me? What is your will for me? What is your will for me? All I wanted to know was God's will. And, I, and to me, the only place that I was gonna find it was at church. So all they could do was find me here, cleaning the toilets, um, pulling the weeds. I would count the kids' coins till my, my fingers turned green from all the pennies. I would just always be here. They asked pastor, you know, why did you hire her? I couldn't get rid of her. 
Every time I turn around, she was here. She was here. I, mean, I, would, I would just be out there washing his truck. He's like, you're here. You're here. You're here again. I just want, it's like, God, I want to know what your will for me. He's like, you're already doing it. <laughs> you're here. <laughs> you're in ministry. You're, you're, it was God's will for me. But I, it was the only place I knew where, where I could find it. <laughs> God, I need to know your will. I want to know your will. What is your will? The, it was just funny. The interns asked Pastor Ann, what's so special about the girls? He's like, I couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> they were always here. They were always here. Right? When we lack in wisdom, we ask God. Ask God. For, we've got decisions. We've got things coming up. Let him ask God who gives generously. He gives generously. How many of you guys need some generous wisdom? Ask God. Seek God. And he will answer you. Come on. Who gives generously and re- without reproach. And it will be given to them. But. Here comes that big but. But. Let them ask for wisdom and faith with no doubting. For whoever doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. There they go like this and that, right? For let not that person suppose that they'll receive anything from the Lord. Being a double-minded person, unstable and restless in all their ways, even in the way they think, feel, or decide. Majority of Christians, they ask God. They doubt God, and then they blame God. Why? Because we need wisdom, God. We need your wisdom. Give me your wisdom. He's not going to answer me. He doesn't care about me. Then you doubt God. You wonder why you get no answer. Then you blame God. Not us. Not here. Not at Love Life. Come on. Not us. No, we ask God. We believe God. Then we give God all the glory for his faithfulness to provide wisdom generously. Wisdom generously in every area of our life, right? Proverbs 3.13. Happy, blessed, empowered to prosper is the man who finds. What? What? They went out and found some wisdom. You better be seeking, searching, knocking, doing what you got to do, right? I was at the church. Oh, what's, what's your will for me? What's your will for me? Just cleaning the toilets because it's all I knew how to do, right? I'm like, I know how to pull weeds. I know how to clean the toilets. I got this. Like, let's go. <laughs> what was I doing? Seeking, finding, asking, right? Skillful and godly wisdom. And the man who gains. How many of y'all want some gains? Who's ready for some gains? Let's gain understanding. But the word is the protein. Get in the protein. Get in the protein. Get in the word. We're going to have them gains. Let's go. And insight. Learning from God's word and life experiences. Learn from life's experience. Okay? If you make a choice and it fails and you fall, don't make that choice again. You know, like, let's just, let's, like, okay, that failed for my parents. Let's not repeat history, but let's make history. You know, let's, let's, let's learn from others. Let's learn from the word. Let's learn from our life experience, right? Wisdom comes from God, but we have to make the choice to actively seek, pursue, search, find, secure, request godly, sound wisdom and truth. In Proverbs, godly wisdom is continually referred to as a beautiful, virtuous woman. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. Wisdom, godly wisdom and man's wisdom, natural wisdom, is always presented as a harlot and an immoral woman, a prostitute. Oh, no thanks. Eh, we'll pass. That's, that's, how pro, that's how profitable your wisdom is. That ain't good. Right? There's always a war. God's way versus our own way. Right? God's way. Light versus dark. Spirit versus the flesh. Right? Anybody? Woo! Yes! I'm going to get up. I'm going to read the word. And when that, when that alarm goes off, the flesh wins. It's so, it's still dark out. You know, it's still cold out there. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not in my house. Like, I wake up when it's dark and I, I let myself know it's time to get up, right? I, I like it so cold. I like a fan right here, a fan right here. I, I'm, 
we grew up, I grew up without an AC, okay? I grew up with a fan. So in my world, that's how you sleep. So if you ain't got that noise, I'm like, it's too quiet. Why is it so quiet? <laughs> and we grew up in a family of seven. So I always went to bed early, you know, so they got the TV, you got people fighting, you got people yelling. We had a bunk bed, four of us. So I'm like, ah, oh, feels good to go to sleep without. It's like when it's quiet, I'm like, y'all make some noise. <laughs> but I just, anyways. Light versus dark. <laughs> There's always a battle. Spirit versus the flesh, right? God's kingdom versus the world system. And wisdom versus foolishness. We're always going to be making the choices. We're always going to be making the choices for ourselves. we got to choose for ourselves. And here at Love Life, we are getting an understanding that we choose wisdom. We choose God's kingdom. We choose the spirit. We choose the light. Come on. Proverbs 3.14. Through 18, for wisdom, prof, for wisdom's profit is better than the profit of silver, and her gain is better than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and nothing you could wish for compares with her in value. Long life is in her right hand. Come on, the older you get, the longer that life, the longer that life I want. And in her left hand is riches and honor. Her way is a highway of pleasantness and favor. How many of y'all want to be on a highway to favor? Wherever you go, you got on that highway to favor. Everywhere you walk in, you got favor. Everyone you communicate with, you have favor. You have favor with God and man, right? And all of her paths are peace. How many of y'all want to take the path to peace? Not recklessness, not anxiety, not high stress. No, we want a path to peace in our relationships, with our finances. Come on, with your marriage, with your, with your parenting, with your decisions. We follow after peace. We follow after peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy, blessed, empowered to prosper is everyone who holds her tight. Who's her? Wisdom. Lady Wisdom is crying out. Lady Wisdom is trying to call out to the young, to the simple, to the wise. Do you want more information? Do you want more knowledge? Do you want wisdom, right? We're always blaming the, um, which we're going to get into oh, maybe next week. But the world is always alluring you, right? with temptation, with this. But do you know wisdom is crying out? Wisdom is crying out for you to choose wisdom, to find wisdom, seek wisdom. There's always a war. God's way versus our own way, right? And let's look at a story really quick. I think I'm just going to go for it. Let's look at a story really quick, a parable of a young man in the book of Proverbs. We all know about this young man. Oh my gosh. This is just an example, by the way, okay? Not all women are, not all women are this crazy lady, okay? Just don't be offended for her sake. And not all men or young men are this naive and lacking wisdom, right? But as we look at this story, we need to ask ourselves, where am I lacking wisdom? Where am I void of understanding? Because if I'm void of understanding, then I'm that naive young man that is falling for the tricks. They're falling for the tricks. Financially with your monies, where am I lacking wisdom? Relationally with those that you allow to influence you and your choices, where are you lacking wisdom? Professionally with your schooling, job and your future, right? Foodie with your health choices, what's alluring you in? Like every drive through, every in and out, every Taco Bell, you need me. What is it, right? What is it? The more, the, the, the more you say no, the easier it gets. Just letting you know. Just letting you know, right? Morally, with your character and your lifestyle choices, are you void of understanding when it comes to lifestyle choices? Physically, with your fitness or your activity choices, are we void of understanding? We've got to ask ourselves, where do I need the wisdom of God, right? Proverbs 7, 6. At the window of my house, I look down through the lattice. There we are opening the blinds, looking at the neighbors. I saw among the simple, 
the stupid. <laughs> I saw and noticed among the young men a youth who had no sense. He didn't have no mentor. He didn't have a dad that said, listen up, son. We don't walk down this street. We don't look at this website. We don't go down this page. We don't go down this way because we're, we're not liars. We're not deceivers. We're not cheaters. It's not about you and your youth and you're just going to get over this. No, the habits you have today, you're going to carry out into tomorrow. He needed a man. He needed the word. He needed a mentor to let him know that God's got a plan. Yeah, sin is pleasurable for a season. And when that season's up, pay up, sucker. And nobody, if nobody tells you, then you fall for the lie. You fall for the trick. But I will give my life to empower you. To I love you enough to correct you, to speak the truth in your life. Say, God's got a better way. God's got a better way. And wisdom gives you the empowerment to know there's a better way. To know that there's a better way for your life. Lacking good judgment which comes with time and experience with which he did not have. He was going down the street near her corner. This has to do with all of us. This has to be that website because you keep shopping too much and you just keep filling up things in your cart and things in your cart. You're in debt, you're in credit card. You're like, woo! You planning for a wedding like you a millionaire. Who you think you is? Get off Pinterest. Ladies, I mean, sometimes you're like, oh, the $10,000 dress. Do you have a down payment for a house? That's for somebody. Sorry. Because we was coming for the guys. Let me come for the girls too, right? Going down the street to her corner, walking along in the direction of her house in the twilight where you should be asleep. You ain't got no business out at twilight. Go to sleep. Put your fan on. <laughs> As the day was fading, the dark in the night set in. Then came out a woman. She came to meet him. She was dressed like a prostitute and with a crafty intent. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay home. Now in the streets, now in the club, now with the casino, now, at, oh, oh, oh. Right? Now in the square, now at the corner, she lurks. She lurking. Who's lurking? That website? Man, your algorithms got you. Your algorithm knows when you depress. Your algorithm knows when you lonely. Your algorithm knows when you stress. What is it sending you? Sending you, sending you, sending you. Check out. Lurking, lurking. She took hold of him and she kissed him. Ugh. Right? With a brazed face, she said, yikes, today I have filled my vows. Where is she making these vows, right? I have food from fellowship offering at home. What in the world is a fellowship offering? Okay, religiously, she said, I went to church. I've emptied my sin bucket and I went to confession. Now let's fill it back up again, right? This is Old Testament. <laughs> so I came out to meet you. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you are special. You are one in a million. Homie, you one of a million. Don't think you special. Come on, level up. Where am I lacking understanding? Where am I lacking wisdom? Where am I lacking knowledge? Come on, it's God's way versus our own way. It's light versus dark, spirit versus the flesh. Come on, God's kingdom, his way of doing things versus the world's system. Wisdom versus foolishness, right? Where is it? Financially, relationally, professionally, foodie, morally, physically. Ask yourself. Where am I void of understanding? In 16, I've covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe and some cinnamon and some hot chocolate. I don't know. In ancient time, man, everything stunk. Can you imagine? They had no toothpaste. They had no soap. They had no mouthwash. They had no deodorant. They had no socks, no shoes. They had no trash, man. Who picked up the trash? So it stunk, right? So this lady had some money. She bought some spices. She got the hot sauce. She's like, let's go. Come, come in. Come over here. Let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. Don't worry. My husband, this boy, the lady said, my husband. This is why we need an understanding, right? 
Oh, if, well, how many times? Because you're going to be the one in a million. Just sign up for this pyramid scheme. We need you. You are special. You, you are a special person. You're going to be the one that's going to make it big. You're going to be a star. Come, just sign with us. Just, just put, all of your, put all of your pictures out there. You know what? We got young people saying, somebody DM, DM me, ask me for pictures. I'm like, why does somebody want your pictures? You already post pictures. Why do they need you to DM pictures? Stop. Don't be void of understanding. Have wisdom. Have knowledge. Have discernment. Be wise. Don't worry, my husband's not home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his man purse, he filled it up with money, and he won't be home till the full moon. Moon, I don't know. There's no consequences if nobody knows what we do. It's just for fun. It's just during my teen years. It's just during my single years. It's just during my partying years. It's just for fun. It's just until I get married. It's just until I become a dad. It's just until I get my career. Do you know how many people are ruining their lives just for fun, just for this season. You may be paying for that season for the rest of your life. I wanna give you wisdom so that what you're paying and what you're reaping is a good harvest, is a blessed, prosperous harvest, right? With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed. Who do we follow? We follow Jesus like an ox going to a slaughter, like a deer stepping into a snare until uh, an arrow pierced his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it would cost him his life. Where am I lacking good judgment? Where am I lacking, come on, that could cost me my life, that could cost me my future, that could cost me, come on, who are you following? 24, now then, my son, listen to me. Sons, daughters, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray to her paths. Many are the victims she brought down and all who were slain by her were strong men. Come on. Her house is a highway to the grave. What was the house, what was the highway of wisdom? To favor and peace. This guy's on a highway to hell, <laughs> right? Leading down to the chambers of death. Now then, my son, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways, to the world's ways, to the flesh. Come on, don't stray to her past. Get wisdom. Follow after Jesus. Jesus is saying, come to me and I will give you. He says, follow me and I will make you. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. Follow me and I'll make you. I'll make you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing your soul with salvation. Take my yoke, my purpose upon you and learn from me. Follow me as a disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke, my purpose is easy to bear, and my burden is light. God himself made a way so that we could have a new life through Christ Jesus. God gave us Christ to be our wisdom. And God gave us the word of God so that we could follow after him, so that we could be wise and that we could have understanding and that we could take the right path for our life. God has a great destiny for all of you. And just say you made the wrong decision. Let me tell you, you can get back on track. You can get back on track for God's plan and God's purpose for your life. You're never too young and you're never too old to get right on track with God. He loves you and he's got a great plan and destiny for all of you. I love you guys so much and I hope you guys receive something tonight. Have a great night. We will see you guys on Sunday. Love you guys.